Good afternoon. Welcome to Hot Lead. I'm Jake Tapper. Almost two weeks out from the first presidential debate, during which I was proud to be a pointless mannequin. And the mainstream media is still harping on about Joe Biden with increasing calls for him to step down. Those increasing calls have come almost exclusively from the media itself, with absolutely no thought to the will or the wishes of either the majority of Democrats or the general public. Add to that the fact that Biden has barely missed a step in the last two weeks. And what you're left with is the overwhelming impression that this entire thing is a story, a crisis, a scandal, if you will, manufactured entirely by the press to drum up clicks and views. And speaking as someone at the very heart of this issue, I can tell you right now that it is. Also, much to the chagrin of all of us, it hasn't worked. Biden's not going anywhere, damn it. The Democrats have mostly rallied around him, and public opinion suggests the people want him to stay. So we in the media have segued seamlessly from the poor debate performance straight into a new story, which is that Biden doesn't have a policy agenda for his second term. His entire campaign is being run on an anti-Trump platform with no policy at all. That is also not true, as anyone with half a brain could tell you after watching pretty much any speech that Biden has given in the last six months. Joe Biden's policies are the same policies he has been pursuing for the last three and a half years. Of course, if Democrats seize control of the House and the Senate in November, they'll actually be able to implement policies that have been hung up by the do-nothing GOP for the last year and a half. But no, if it ain't shiny and new, we're just not interested. We're, we're a lot like magpies in that regard. Here at QNN, ABC, CBS, QVC, and even at MSNBC, we'd much rather make up a good old-fashioned crisis than report the actual news. And by actual news, I'm talking about stuff like the fact that Donald Trump actually has no policy agenda, unless you count retribution or televised military tribunals for people who had the audacity to stand up against him as policy. The only policy he does kind of sort of have is the terrifying authoritarianism espoused in the Heritage Foundation's Project 2025. But that horrific manifesto has been so widely condemned that even Trump had to distance himself from it. And without that, all he has is retribution. But will we cover that in the mainstream media? Good Lord, no. Even though a second Trump term would quite literally spell the end of American democracy, we're going to help him inch closer to that goal by making up shit about Biden. You're welcome, America. Here with me to discuss this is famed German academic and president of the Global Institute of Mundane Politics, Dr. Ernst Klartex. Dr. Klartex, thank you for joining us. As an outside observer, what are your thoughts on the scandalous revelation that Joe Biden is quite old? Yeah, Joe Biden is an old man. That much is undeniable. But it behooves me to point out that Donald Trump also is an old man. And while Biden does not perhaps walk or talk as powerfully as he once did, at least he is not so disheveled as to require adult diapers, no? That's true, but it seems like you're damning him with faint praise. I mean, can you imagine if we were to elect an incontinent man to the presidency? It's unheard of. Guter Herr im Himmel, rette mich vor diesen Idioten. What about your aufgedunsene, schwachkopf last president? The man who literally stunk up the Oval Office for four years. Well, despite numerous accounts, evidence, testimony, anecdotes, undeniable facts, and what is, frankly, an unseemly and hard-to-explain bulge in Trump's pants, we have no proof that he wears or ever wore diapers. So, in the interest of fairness, we won't make that assertion. But, you know, Biden was visited by an expert as Parkinson's disease a few times, so let's look at that. Despite not showing any of the symptoms of Parkinson's disease, the fact that a doctor who, let me be very clear, also does doctor stuff, went and visited him a few times, well, it's... It sounds alarms. No, it does not. Your insistence in reporting speculative diagnosis of the sitting president is deeply concerning. At this point, it seems that you are determined, some might say desperate, for there to be something, anything wrong with him. Well, no, that's not true at all. We would much rather that there be nothing wrong with the president, and I resent that insinuation. And with that lip service paid, let's turn now to Biden's obvious dementia. Now, if you want to look at the facts, it turns out that in reality, Biden only actually screwed up about three lines in the presidential debate. But Trump was so very loud and confident sounding that he made Biden seem weak by comparison, a sure sign of dementia on Biden's part. What, Dr. Clartex, do you make of the fallout from that debate? And just how low do you rate Biden's mental acuity on a scale of one to 10, where one is a drooling vegetable and 10 is barely able to tie his own shoelaces? We're really not interested in scores above that. 
what fallout. Numerous experts have weighed in on this, Cytus stating with absolute certainty that Biden showed no sign of serious mental disease. He was simply tired under the weather and not performing his best. I would rate him a 75 plus, but you don't give a shit about that, do you? No, I have to confess, I do not. If I started giving a shit about what any of my guests thought, then I would have to start wearing adult diapers. And we all know that that isn't going to happen anytime soon. Anyway, I would thank you for your time, Dr. Clartex, but since you didn't obsequiously capitulate to my biased, desperate narrative, I'm not going to. So that was Dr. Ernst class text of the global yada yada, whatever the hell it was, who cares. Next week, I'm going to have to look into finding a guest who will back up my absurd stories rather than these intelligent people who want to cast doubt on my nonsense. Maybe I can get Don Jr. or, better yet, Eric Trump, a man so dumb he can't even pass a urine test, not because of any illicit substances or anything, but because he hasn't yet mastered the subtle art of peeing into a cup. We're going to take a quick break. When we return, I'll be talking to Stephen Miller about his new book, It Burns, How Joe Biden Weaponized the Sun Against His Bloodsucking Critics. The only policy he does kind of sort of have is... About in the mind in Springer and Israel's wing as an in is the terrifying author authoritarianism espoused in the Carol and I can censoring and the Heritage Foundation's project 2025. But that horrific manifesto has been so widely condemned that even Trump had to distance himself from it. 